so what we're <laughs> studying a lot a lot of great people that you know trying to prophesize 2012 uh, and the new age of consciousness that is dawning upon us is right now uh, earth is a third density uh, density place where third density beings our dogs are, you know, second density beings, just to give you an idea, you know, we have more control, more ability to do things. A fish or something in the water may be like first density. Um, so Earth um, could possibly be, I, I have a feeling it is, because I know consciousness is evolving through my research, my own personal experience, shifting to a fifth density place. And that's a powerful statement, and what the hell does that mean? is our consciousness is upgrading just like you know a new television comes out every five or ten years with a new technology that you know changes everything as far as that technology and what we're able to do could you imagine just thinking and going someplace you know just hey let's go to the donut store get a donut boom appearing there uh, could you imagine possibly walking through a wall you know having less uh, constraints but being able to do more in a fifth uh, density universe, and that's what I'm. I'm actually looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind evolving to a higher, and that's what we do collectively, and that's our our journey. You know, throughout we have existed forever. We are consciousness. We're not just put here this lifetime, but we're always going to exist. So to exist in a higher dimension and to evolve, to me, that's a good thing. And then you have people that are very fear-based and they're looking at, you know, 2012 or this new shift of consciousness is going to make or break you because it can. If you're a fear-based person with a lot of entropy and that level is high, negative stuff is going to happen. You're not going to transfer to the fifth dimension. You could, you know, die out on the third or be trapped in the third because it's your own free will to choose to advance, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. well, and, and advance might be complicated to people, but... Just choose peace above. Peace and you know, love. Yeah, light. peace and love and light. <laughs> the light comes with the peace and love. But um, uh, one of the things uh, that um, uh, I see it as, uh, like you were saying, like a TV, it's like a computer and uh, the upgraded version. We're constantly, we're kind of built like computers where all these little bits of information come in and then we have to... Uh, be able to uh, distinguish, you know, what is uh, uh, useful and what isn't, and uh, and and then um, we have uh, uh, to be able to uh, um, pick out what isn't working for us and uh, use what is, and then grow with that. Uh, and sort of like uh, I would say, it just seems like a computer program that uh, uh, if you. I don't know much about the computers, but if uh, uh, you uh, see how these uh, computer programs work uh, and how they become more and more sophisticated is they uh, uh, expand on what works better and what isn't working and, you know, the old drives of the computer, uh, they eliminate. So, uh, and that's pretty much what consciousness does, why some things don't evolve uh, or uh, uh, they're extinct because they, they're intelligent function wouldn't work with the uh, changes and so they just uh, I guess like the dinosaurs died off and nothing really dies off completely I guess now we have uh, let's use the atoms and molecules from those old uh, dinosaur bones and things like that so everything gets recycled into something but uh, um, until uh, you have an I don't know, awareness of um, how uh, this intelligent uh, 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 collective life force works, you sort of like, uh, you're in a box and you keep doing the same things over and over again. Uh, and so we, uh, uh, you have no awareness of how you're going to, there's a little fly over here, how you're going to get out of that box. And so you can't see the collective larger view of things. And so until you have that vision of that collective larger view of things, which is never going to happen until you have an experience. And when you have an experience, lots of times it's usually through a crisis or uh, some traumatic experience uh, uh, that makes you say, well, you know, um, I don't know uh, where that was taking me, but I don't want to go there anymore. And so then you withdraw within to yourself, your ego goes back down and shrinks down a little bit. 
to a little smaller size, and then you can expand into a, a, a broader view of of things and people, and and a, a, and a peace will come over you like you've never had before. So this is sort of how it works. Uh, it consciousness interprets, uh, throws out what doesn't need, uh, uses what it does. Um, and um, uh, it grows and learns from it, and then we become more and more evolved as we, you know, I think it was 16 and a half billion years how we started. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've been around a yeah. long, 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 yeah. long time. And I like how she put, um, you know, you got to get outside that box, and the box, uh, let's call it the matrix. Uh, the matrix is pretty much the false illusion that you're tied into and trapped inside. That is that box. Uh, the matrix is pretty much, you know, you tuning on to the television and believing uh, all the news stories uh, that they share with you just because they're on TV. That's your box. That's your reality. That's your illusion. You need to see past what your perception allows you to see. And you do that by expanding and raising your consciousness. And um, one of the simple ways to do that is by meditating or um, paying attention uh, to your emotions. Mm -hmm. um, paying attention to your emotions can set you free. Um, and it is really simple. Um, it's not difficult. It's just the human mind or ego uh, tends to make things difficult. But meditation is actually one of the easiest things I have ever done in my life. And I could be meditating just by breathing. I could get in that state of mind um, but I um, pay uh, tribute to that because I actually put the time into to develop it and manifest it. It's just like a, a chef becomes a chef by practicing cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking, and that becomes a part of their life, and they become a master chef. The same thing with consciousness or meditation or remote viewing or um, all this stuff that we're talking about, um, anybody can attain it if they willfully, diligently, um, you know, give it some effort. You'll be amazed at what, the, what you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. This bug is actually attacking me now. <laughs> <laughs> the integral yoga. Yeah. It's constantly the work. That's yeah. what it's called, the work. And the work is on yourself. You know, it's not a job. It's the thing that uh, um, uh, we are here to do, grow, learn, it's the inborn urge uh, to uh, want to experience something uh, that we think is outside of ourselves, but it's really, we're a part of it all, and we're not a separate being, we're just an entity, and there's many, many entities that are interconnected uh, uh, to each other, that uh, we experience uh, a fullness of view uh, on our sunlit path that brings us more... Um, of uh, peace, joy, love, and hope, so that we can have heaven on earth. That they always explain it's here and now. We just don't see it, and right. we don't see it because we're not experiencing the state of uh, consciousness that we need to be in. We're just stuck in our heads most of the time. Which is sometimes uh, you want to watch a horror movie is one thing you can shut it off, but some people live those things inside their heads, and boy. Um, 